If you've ever started a game from the Trail series, you know just how important the act of reading in these games truly is. After all, these are story-heavy JRPGs and ones that pride themselves at being slow burns meant to get you to invest in their characters and world. The fact of the matter is, you're going to spend many of your hours in Zemuria reading and not necessarily always dungeon crawling or fighting. That is one of the appeals of the series to its loyal fans, and it also leads to the games having ridiculously large scripts. Which unfortunately for many of us also makes them notoriously difficult to localize into other languages. But it's not just the main storyline's dialogue that you should be invested in reading. Yes, there are other things like NPC dialogue, quest lines, and in the case of Cold Steel, bonding events too. But today we're here to talk about these games in universe form of additional reading material. Books and newspapers. Did you think I was joking? No, I'm actually being very serious. Every Trails game includes supplemental reading material inside the games themselves that are meant to enrich your experience in the world. These come in the form of national newspapers, fictional books, and informative non-fiction titles. Well, non-fiction inside the story world, anyway. In fact, taking time to actually read the entirety of any given game's book and newspaper collection can easily add a couple of hours to your playthrough. Falcon went through a lot of trouble to add this touch to the games, despite the fact it is 100% completely optional. But, I will say as someone who has played these games extensively, reading the books and newspapers has not been busy work or filler to me. It has honestly been one of my favorite things to do in every game, and has added a lot to my understanding and enjoyment of the Trails world. But how can that be? What makes them so special? Well, let's look at the three different types of reading materials you can find in every game, and just what it is they add to the experience. Thus far, every arc in the series has had its own national newspaper. Liberal has the Liberal News, Crossbell has its Crossbell Times, and Erebonia is home to the Imperial Chronicle. As you progress in every game, new issues of these newspapers will go on sale at any given general goods store, and subsequently, previous issues almost always disappear, so take care not to miss them. Inside each issue, you can find any variety of things that pertain to the game you're currently playing. Sometimes, it's a report on a major event that the protagonists themselves played a role in, other times, it's coverage of something that's happening separate from the main characters that the game would still prefer you know about. For example, in the first Trails of Cold Steel, the Imperial Chronicle features multiple articles over the course of the game that cover events concurrently happening in Crossbell State. In other words, the articles are allusions to the events that happened in Trails from Zero and Trails to Azure. But that's not all. You may also find puff pieces meant to highlight a new location or attraction you just so happen to be visiting in the near future, seemingly random advertisements for businesses in the world, propaganda, or even articles that foreshadow secrets in the world that you haven't experienced yet. If you're familiar with me and my channel, you know I like to go on and on about Trails world building. Well, the newspaper system is one of the many ways that Falcon likes to make their world feel like it's truly alive. Writing these newspapers, which may go overlooked by many players, requires Falcom to do more work, but their inclusion lends credence to the idea that the world the games take place in exists beyond just the scope of what the main character is experiencing in the story. They help instill one of my favorite concepts in not just Trails, but in all fleshed out game worlds, which is, there's a big world out there, and it's going to keep on moving with or without you or the protagonist in it. There's something about that feeling that, for me anyway, makes a video game's world feel more like a place I can escape to, rather than one I'm just viewing through a looking glass. But it's not just newspapers that help achieve this feeling. On various shelves and inside shops, you can find books for yourself to read as well. Now when I say books, I don't mean 100 plus page pieces of literature. Books in the Trails world are more or less excerpts that are on average no longer or shorter than the newspapers are. Within their covers are genres and topics ranging from fiction, to poetry, history, biology, all the way to dry analysis of the socio-economic history of Liberal's Ruan region. 
There's even a book titled Kitty Talk for Dummies that appears in Sky First Chapter, which is literally just a collection of cat talk translated into expressions. Sometimes the content of these books is extremely relevant to the game you're playing, and is just as crucial to the world building as anything in the main scenario. Other times it's Kitty Talk for Dummies. You never know what you may get, but it doesn't hurt to stop and open them. Even a few of the seemingly non-crucial books comprise some of my favorites in the series, such as The Herb Woodpecker, also from First Chapter. Still, even among those I didn't get much enjoyment from, I can't say I regret stopping to read them because their inclusion solidifies for me how genuine the world often is. Much like how not every line an NPC speaks is going to be enthralling or in any way relevant to what's happening in the game, the fact that it's there shows that Falcom tried to create a world that was authentic. It goes back to the idea that the world is going to keep moving no matter what you do. It may sound odd, but I like the idea that the game world is almost indifferent to the player's presence. NPCs in the Trail series are made to seem like real people who are living their day-to-day -day lives regardless of whether the player ever stops to talk to them. They feel like they're not just placed there for your entertainment. Why would the in-universe literature be any different? Falcom has struck a fine balance between in-game literature that helps build the world and tell the story, while still sticking to the theory that the universe doesn't just revolve around the player. However, the third kind of reading material in these games very much exists just for the player. In fact, if there were one type of additional text I would prefer you read in every game over the others, it would be this. One of the running traditions in Trails is there to be a collectible book series in every game for players to find and read. These seemingly fictional books, however, are a bit more unique than the other ones that appear in the games and actually have more importance than simple entertainment or additional info. For one, they are several chapters long and combine to make one whole story. Secondly, collecting these books without external help such as an FAQ can be rather difficult. The books tend to appear for a very limited time window in the possession of an NPC in the world who will hand them over if you speak with them. And that NPC typically is in the exact opposite direction of where the story may be asking you to go, and sometimes, the time window in which to acquire the book is cruelly short. I'm looking at you, Carnelia Chapter 3. So why make these book sets so difficult to collect? Three reasons. Number one, they're worth it because they're very well written, and many would stand on their own as short stories outside of the context of the Trails games themselves. Number two, if you manage to collect the entire set, then near the end of the game there will always be an NPC willing to trade you for them. In the first game, the NPC would give you the choice between the ultimate weapons for Estelle and Joshua, and in every game since, the trade has been for a material that allows you to craft the ultimate weapon in the game for any party member not just the main character. And finally, reason number three, and the one I think is most important. The content of these book series is actually significant to the world building and lore. Yes, the books have hidden meanings behind them, because it's the Trail series, and of course they do. But rather than explain the origin of this tradition, and why Falcom does it myself, I actually was fortunate enough to have Falcom President Toshihiro Kondo answer it personally on my behalf. From Kill Scott Kill for Kondo. Every Trails game has a collectible book series for players to read. Do you personally have a favorite book series that has appeared in the games? どれかなやっぱりあのカーネリアですかねああ、probably talk about why um, novels are in the game to begin with. This is actually something that um, was in the precursor series, you could say, to the Trails of series, which is the Gargoff trilogy. There were these novels in that game, and 
it was really, really cool because within that, there is this character actually that was talked about within the novels inside Gargav that actually ends up coming out at some point in the game. And this character is hinted at and talked about, and it was really, really cool. And so this is something that we wanted to um, continue when we were making the Trails of series. Now the thing is, is that as you can imagine, these are really, really hard to write. And it always kind of turns into a case among the writing team of, will you write it? No, will you write it? <laughs> but um, the fact that you can do that and kind of have, you know, hint at things and bring characters, then particularly in the case of Carnelia, without spoiling anything, you know, how that ends up relating to the events of the game is also something really cool too. So that's a tradition we were proud to carry on and continue from uh, previous games in the Legend of Heroes series. Indeed, the collectible books are primers for themes, locations, and even characters that will appear in future games. And the games they're foreshadowing are not always ones that are meant to release in the immediate future. Gambler Jack, which appears in Trails in the Sky's second chapter, is set in the Calvert Republic, which, as of the making of this video, has not been given an arc in the series yet. Gambler Jack stars two characters named Jack and Hal, set in a city known as the Republic's Eastern Quarter. Whether Jack and Hal depict real in-universe characters we may someday meet is unknown, however, as you can see, the book was adapted into a minigame in Trails in the Sky the Third. Gambler Jack's existence has created speculation for 13 years running over who these characters could be, and what it may be like to meet their in-universe counterparts when the series finally goes to Calvert. Suffice to say, there have been characters like Jack and Hal in other books whom we have gone on to meet in later games so there's no reason to think it won't happen with them, too. But it's not just about the characters in the books. The stories themselves often deal with themes that are important to understand for the universe. Kondo's favorite book series, Carnelia, which just so happens to be the series' first collectible book, not only had at least one of these secret characters, but it also helped flesh out what kind of role the Septian Church plays in Zemuria. In my opinion, the collectible books are absolutely worth every player's time. And even if you think jumping through the hoops to find all of these books sounds like too much of a hassle, there are other ways to experience them. Oftentimes, they reappear in future games as non-collectible books for you to read at your leisure. For example, Carnelia can be found in its entirety in the library of the Erebonian Embassy during Sky's second chapter, and aboard the Lusitania and in the Hermit's Garden during Sky the third. It also came back yet again as books you could buy and add to your notebook during Trails of Cold Steel. It's almost like Falcom really wants you to read it. But if even that isn't enough, you could always just read the books whenever you want online at the Kiseki Wiki. Yes, they're readily available for you in their entirety at the Wiki. So the only excuse you have to not read them is that you just don't want to. And that can't be the case, right? No, but for real, read them. They're really good. When I think about just how much reading is in the Trail series, I'm hit with a wave of irony. Growing up, like many children, I saw video games as a way to escape doing mundane things such as reading. As a boy, I'd much rather be beating bad guys on my Nintendo or PlayStation than I would be reading a book that was assigned to me at school. And yet now, as a grown-ass man, my favorite video game series is primarily reading. If you like these games, chances are you love to read. And it doesn't have to be reading in the traditional sense of novels. Whether it's reading text-heavy games like this, or visual novels, or the daily news or social media or biographies, whatever the case. If you really like these games, then like me, you probably enjoy getting lost in this kind of world and absorbing as much information as you can about its characters and happenings. So I say, what's a little bit more reading on top of that? I think the return on investment when it comes to time spent reading every game's books and newspapers is quite high, especially when it comes to the collectible book series that appears in each game. So next time you're in Zemuria, give a thought to putting off reporting your next bracer job, taking another support request, or completing that field study task. Stop, open a newspaper or book, and let yourself soak in the living, breathing world you're visiting all that much more.